so hello hello welcome on SG Talks and today I'm meeting Eva Rapaki from Hatch Labs. Eva is in New York I'm very happy to meet her and uh, welcome Eva Mo. Thank you Pedro so nice to meet you as well. It's uh, such a pleasure talking to a person that started from Greece and is currently in New York <laughs> and I believe that um, as you are in the field that is not to my absolute understanding, which is uh, machine learning and AI, uh, mm -hmm. I would love to know a bit more about how you ended up working on this field and where you what did you start from? Anything that is important for you? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um so I started in Greece, uh, in Crete, actually, <laughs> where I'm coming from. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so originally, I didn't think that I would uh, end up in AI, uh, machine learning at the time, like 10 years ago almost. And um, I started as a civil engineer because I was very inspired from my family. Uh, that um, my father is a civil engineer and I really wanted to like build actual like infrastructure projects <laughs> that we can see. Uh, so I was very um, like, curious and ambitious about um, where that can take me. Um, I started traveling at a very young age um, to Hong Kong to uh, complete after completing my studies in, in Patras in Greece. I oh, went... so so pardon. What yeah. age was that? What where when did you start uh, going abroad? Uh, eighteen, roughly. Okay, uh, that's harsh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, my first international travel was in Hong Kong, uh, where I went for a summer camp, and then um, I left. Um, at 22 uh, to California in LA for my master's. <laughs> so Okay, so it was a trip. Uh, so you were 18 years old. You went for a summer in Hong Kong, came mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. To complete to my bachelor's degree okay. at the University okay. of Patras uh, in, in civil engineering. Uh, and then I continued my studies in California because I was very... I chose California because I was very passionate about earthquakes. Uh, and in Greece, we also have yeah. uh, a lot of impacts due to yeah. earthquakes. Yeah, right. So, um, I really wanted to understand that field, ground motions, like everything surrounding that. Um, and in the US, I had a lot of influences, um, especially right. how to use like big data. At that time, it was like deep learning. It, was just coming out from computer science so I was really in between like choosing what should I do in my career um, so I would either just continue like the traditional civil engineering, traditional civil engineering. exactly or uh, take a very uh, brave <laughs> decision to go after uh, computer science, emerging tech at the time, which was deep learning. Um, and not only I took the decision to follow that, but it's, I went for a PhD uh, in that field. Yeah, I, I, I figured while I was reading <laughs> your CV and I was like, okay, okay. So yeah. was it, uh, was the, um, uh, so your master's was on what exactly, what was the, the title of your master's degree? Uh, earthquake engineering. Earthquake engineering. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is your PhD strictly related to civil engineering uh, or is it more towards computer science and that's how you ended up doing machine learning? Mm -hmm. uh, in a broader sense, like the application uh, would be uh, considered as a field of, of civil engineering in terms of how we digitize infrastructure. Yes. Uh, but the actual uh, algorithms, everything surrounding my studies, my thesis, my interest is purely computer science. So a lot of like really in the, <laughs> at the nuances and technicalities of, of algorithms and understanding machine learning, which, which was a very steep curve, uh, to be honest. I like, bet. I bet. <laughs> I bet. And, yeah. and actually, 
I didn't even think that when I uh, was a child that I would um, end up in that uh, field. I actually felt very um, uh, in, uh, anxious and intimidated in terms of when it came to like programming. Uh, but everything kind of changed when I learned uh, everything that surrounded ML. Uh, I really wanted to understand how this is going to transform yes. the industry. And here we are now. <laughs> here we are now. So uh, <laughs> academic journey, Greece, Hong Kong, Greece, mm -hmm. UCLA, California, Cambridge, MIT. Yes, that was the next step for my PhD. Uh, okay. so in Cambridge. For... The question is Cambridge, MIT. Please help me here. Did you stay in America or did you uh, did, did you do your um, did you stay in California actually or did you do your PhD elsewhere? Uh, no, I moved from California to the University of Cambridge. Um, because I saw a project, a uh, company-sponsored project for um, uh, digitizing infrastructure. So Okay, okay. So you moved to Cambridge. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, uh, and now you're in New York. Mm -hmm. Which okay. was a separate journey, <laughs> journey after. Journey, sir. Uh, after I finished my studies, um, for the last part of my PhD, I was a fellow at MIT, where I stayed there for about two years. Uh, so my PhD was split between the two Cambridge <laughs> uh, uh, cities, uh, one in the UK and one in uh, the States. Uh, I really loved my time there and actually my first entrepreneurial seeds, as <laughs> I would say, were planted um, in Cambridge MA. Okay. I started my first startup there um and um happy to talk about that as well uh, then i worked in industry uh, as a software engineer uh, oh okay uh, and then again like my curiosity and the impact that i wanted to have uh with pursuing like more high impactful projects and applying yes. ai uh, got me to florida so i was a faculty member at the University of Florida in partnership with NVIDIA. Um, I launched okay. lots of projects with industry, with federal government, uh, in the uh, sphere of early stage ideas uh, and how to commercialize them. Uh, and then again, uh, being entrepreneurial, I was always like, I really want to to be in that space, a fast paced world and and, and uh, products. So I stepped to, uh, into a head of product role in New York City. This is uh, how mm, I That's why you ended up there. <laughs> okay, so um, how, when did Hatch Labs started? Because this is a very, very big journey. Thing is, when did you start with Hatch Labs? How did you start? Why did you start? What is it about? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so I started about five months ago. So very Oh, recently. it's fresh and new, <laughs> and I wish you the absolute best. It's a baby. Exactly. It's a baby. <laughs> but it's a baby coming from a vast experience, so it's a fast-growing baby. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, exactly. And it actually came because I saw later in my past, like 10 years in academia, in startups, in corporate, I saw everything that I could see. Like I tapped my uh, hands yeah. into lots yeah. of different things. Um, and I realized like always that there is a gap uh, from where we take research and how it actually can get commercialized and we can find product market fit. So that was what I was always like um, astonished and surprised, like how long it takes uh, to actually get a product out <laughs> and that it's successful. Yeah. yeah. Um, and how, how easily, um, how easy it is to fail? Mm -hmm. um, you gave me some numbers and I would love to have them shared. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, on average, um, it takes like four years for start to actually be profitable. Uh, and in general, like 90% of startups would fail overall, which is a dramatic number. Um, 
and we see so much interest right now in the generative AI, what what everybody is calling like AI now with the password. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but of course, there are lots of aspects um, to look into that. And, and this is why I started, this answers the question of why I started Hatch Labs, because there's so much innovation on the technical side. Yeah, but I saw there is actually no innovation on the business side, on the product side. So yeah. we cannot continue to build. So products. there are good products and good services without the, the let's say the good transition from the from the ideation and probably MVP to the market. If I understand correctly, um, yes, uh, and the reason is that there is so much inclination on technology or there is always like, for example, a technical founder who's really like taking on the technical aspects and, and the business uh, uh, founders who are taking on the the business and product aspects of it. Uh, but now with generative AI, uh, there is a difference because we cannot... Um, we need really to merge the two together in order to have a successful product. Uh, and that's uh, what's missing in the market right now. Uh, like we can see like a lot of so many resources around PMF, product market fit, around product strategy, road mapping. However, there is there is no resource on actually how to launch uh, an AI product, and meaning a generative AI product, which is research-based, uh, and how can we know that it, there will actually be return on investment? Yes. So this is why I started Hatch Labs, to actually provide a structured approach, a framework to help founders find their product market fit early on. <laughs> My motto is fail fast because i've been there i've been a founder in the past and it's really like the the fast pace the initial pilots the initial success um successes that really drive the boat <laughs> forward yes um so it's really important um to really get the hone of that uh and and be successful in those early stages so this is where uh we're really focusing on that that was my that was my next question so the question was who are you working with i understand that it's not a typical accelerator you mostly focus on ai and product management uh <laughs> again on generative ai but who are you working with so <laughs> yeah Yes. Um, so uh, I'm working with um, founders um, and executives. Um, our business model is structured at this point as a consulting model. Mm. So the startup tier for pre-seed to series A startups, a growth tier for later stage uh, startups or small, medium-sized organizations. Um, and thirdly, um, uh, for uh, a corporate training or what I call l and uh, for AI strategy for larger corporations and innovation departments. So these are the three different tiers uh, because, okay. of course, it's uh, different for a startup <laughs> that is B2B or B2C, how to, how to go to market, how to position the product, especially yeah. when... Um, the startups have been around for let's say 10 years and mm. it's the time to integrate AI into it. Uh, and I'm not just talking about, uh, let's say an API or a, uh, just this integration uh, of, uh, let's say a chatbot <laughs> in their product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be much more complex than that and use cases where there really needs to be a, a really good understanding from both the strategy and the technical aspects so these are the uh, personas and the the P, the companies that we're the working companies with. that you're working with that's great uh i understand that uh as you're in an early stage yourself um you as you told me you have uh, your your um way to your business model is consulting mm -hmm. and um Right now, if I understand correctly, you're bootstrapping, correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, great. Okay, so I, you're probably still searching your product market fit, but um, as you, as I understand, 
you are in the discovery phase. Um, and uh, the next question with regards to uh, the the whole, let's say, market would be, okay, you are you're doing consulting uh, in a very, let's say, uh, specific um, area, industry, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to start growing. It, it has started growing and it's going to keep on growing. Do you have any estimations, any uh, numbers to share with me with regards to the market size? Where do you see it going? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so it's uh, going to be huge <laughs> based on the predictions that we're seeing so far. Um, so just the B2B AI market, we, because we are primarily focusing on B2B. Um, based on my past experiences mm -hmm. and enterprise products are different from consumer based yes. products. they really need um like i'm reading a book which i'm happy to share also as a link um yes. that, love yeah about that um and adding the ai layer <laughs> to what's uh, surfaced as BMF, the AI product market fit. Uh, so it's uh, about 0.5 trillion market, just the B2B AI market. Uh, and if we look into, like in general, any business in the future will become uh, an AI business, I mean, eventually, because most functions will need to uh, transition into that um, so I see that it's going to become huge which is a blessing and a curve and a curse at curse, the same yes. time <laughs> yes. uh, since um, uh, it's not about uh, uh, especially in the enterprise sector uh, the survival aspect seem to be kind of planned for a lot of businesses, but even that now uh, will become more and more difficult and competitive. Yeah, what exists in the market, and also to to be educated and informed about the landscape, all the resources that are and and the new tools that are coming. So I see a huge opportunity. Uh, at the same time, a lot of uh, caution uh, for for businesses and, and executives and founders uh, to use uh, AI responsibly and ethically, which is another aspect that um, yeah. I'm interested in and working on as part of uh, Batch Labs uh, Accelerator services. Truth is that uh, you mentioned something about uh, educating um, businesses and enterprises on why they need the transition to AI. This is a huge conversation. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, because um, I, what I understand from uh, not only conversations, but uh, from what I see in the business world, I think that um, the, the, the business world has not yet understood the uh, intensity of the need, the the the. the the greatness of the need of mm -hmm. incorporating AI, uh, not only for the automation uh, aspect, but for many, many other uh, consumer, let's say, related uh, aspects uh, and customer journey aspects and marketing aspects and data, data analysis and data collecting uh, aspects. Uh, and I think that the 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 need for education is is great and in information, because mm -hmm. unless you explain the need, I don't think they're ready to to, to adopt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to adopt. Yeah, mm -hmm. it it takes persuasion exactly. to to make them understand the need and then the mm -hmm. the actual assistance that they're going to get through it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, to, to I, I see. You. Prove the value. Um, to of, prove the value, exactly. Yeah. Because it, it is an investment for every business uh, owner to make. Uh, mm -hmm. and the initial cost of investment could be huge, <laughs> depending on the needs that they have. Um, so they really need to see the value and the path to actually right. have a return on that investment. Correct, um, correct. So... 
that's really important and, and that's an aspect that's missing or it takes time to actually connect the dots because so far and particularly for product like when i say like product the software products um when the when the product uh, aspects were not were about to be met like in terms of like road mapping or, or strategy um there was no um not so much ambiguity in terms of like technical feasibility it, it was not mostly like the business aspects that that were ambiguous but right now um it, the aspect of actually having products that from day one will not be let's say 100% perfect in terms of uh, customer experience. That's another aspect that needs to be understood for, from business leader, from leaders, from founders, that what are some thresholds that their customers are comfortable with as the product and the technology improves over time based on um, the services. So that's another aspect which differentiates um, Gen AI products compared to every traditional product. I mean, traditional ML AI product, I would say. Yes, yes. And having said that, uh, I'd like to have, like, let's say, a look into the future. And considering all the uh, trending uh, market situation right now, uh, where do you see this going within the next years, let's say three to five years? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, right now, um, I have this as a, like I mentioned, a consulting uh, bootstrap model. Yeah. Um, and there are lots of reasons for that because um, I think uh, until uh the business aspects and the business leaders are mature enough to get um more 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 data for us <laughs> to work on a yeah. product uh as well as for the industries to become more mature on yeah. adopting uh, these products um we we will continue to bootstrap uh however um where i think the uh really turning point in terms of where this is heading in the next three to five years it will be on actually having an assistant and, and a product an actual product that will help you to get to the stage of growth faster to without losing the human aspect i'm a big proponent and supporter of always having um the humans right now it's me but in the future we plan to grow mm -hmm. Yeah. So there'll be more people surrounding the team um, uh, without just leaving the uh, AI hatch uh, to 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 take all the decisions on its own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, the value prop is really that um, it really uh, turns down and reduces the time um, from pre-launch to growth, which like we said before, it's like four years or even yeah, 10 yeah, years yeah, yeah, yeah. for early stage research ideas to reach uh, traction. So I think the technology has matured so much that um, really there is a, a, a growing opportunity that we really want to, to take on. And uh, over time, um, envisioning a marketplace like with that tool that will actually connect early stage founders with um, small businesses with other uh, customers to help yeah. accelerate that uh, product development in the pre-launch ideally stages so this is the vision <laughs> that i have hatch lamps that's great and hopefully it's going to bloom even more and uh, not hopefully but most likely as you're mm -hmm. As you're doing things that uh, through exp out of experience, you're probably going to find even more ways to um, to grow it and make it even better uh, mm -hmm. through the years. And um, so my other question is, which other companies are doing the thing that you're doing, not by name, but what is your competition? Because I understand that there are direct and indirect competitors right now. And uh, mm -hmm. I think I understand which are the, the indirect competitors, but you can you can always tell me. Yeah, sure. Um, 
I mean, since this field is um, uh, growing and <laughs> in a hyper growth mode right now, um, yeah. there, there are a lot people of people are hopping on the train. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, we will see a lot. And that's, that's also something that is scary in terms of um, a lot of experts, AI experts that will arise out of all this uh, <laughs> new wave. Um, but um, th there are, um, I would say, like two main competitors. Mm -hmm. one, one of them would be like directly the consultants, the consul those companies that are doing consulting services um, uh, and uh, accelerators. Um, however, like the differentiating um, value prop and where we are set, setting apart uh, Hatch Labs is that um, it's uh, we're not focusing on fundraising, for example, like most accelerators will do, or we're not focusing on any types of like business help uh, in terms of processes around the business or uh, go to market strategy or sell selling aspects or marketing. Uh, we really on in the AI and product aspects. Um, and right now there is a gap um, that exists in the markets because the technology is so new and it's very hard to find someone that is so skilled and expert in both the gen AI, machine learning and AI aspects, as well as the product itself to actually drive those startups to growth. Yeah. So we really um, embrace that opportunity uh, and um, we want to become uh, the uh, go-to <laughs> accelerator. The go-to place, yeah, accelerator, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, do, you, do you call yourself an accelerator or do you prefer an, a different uh, name? Um, I yeah I would say that uh, as part of the packages that we offer it it, it is a form yeah. of accelerator service yeah. Yeah. but very specialized very uh, targeted and specific to AI and product perfect Just these aspects yeah perfect okay so um, next next question would be how does the company build a sustainable economic moat? And I understand what's the competitive advantage at this point. So yeah, about the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, there are, like I mentioned earlier, lots of different uh, frameworks, ways to position um product to, to define product strategy, uh, really how we build that uh, systematic and sustainable uh, business mode um, is to introduce that new way of building AI products that really shapes those products and those startups as the next big tech players uh, in the market uh, by addressing both the technical and the strategic aspects blended yeah. together into one strategy uh, that, are, that is aligned with the business and with the product. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm really bringing in all these experiences from many, yeah, 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 many aspects of the of the academia and startups and corporations mm -hmm. exactly yeah. uh, because it's very hard especially in the initial stages to see how um uh, let's say um a product that either way would need to use some sort of generative ai model plus some further like tech stack aspects uh how is that linked with a startup strategy, with the business strategy? So all of those are not taken uh, by assumption or just like presenting a nice deck, but yeah. they are uh, based on facts and quantitative analysis, assessments, and all the different experiences that I'm bringing in the table. So Yeah, which is um, this experience and the team, I believe, is uh, probably the two most valuable assets in a in a new business yeah yeah unless you're, yeah for sure 
Um, okay, so I understand that, as you said, it's going to be, uh, it's going to have an exponential growth on the whole market. And <laughs> you are definitely going to um, try and find ways to diversify yourself. So any ideas about how we can follow you on your next steps and how are you planning on doing this different things than the other people, <laughs> the other startups? Sure. Um, so uh, there are two, two ways uh, that um, uh, you and anyone in the audience can follow us. Uh, one is to attend uh, one of our events uh, that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, virtually as well, not just in New York. <laughs> we're we're planning some in person in New York, but so also... guys, anyone uh, <laughs> in New York, uh, it's January twenty third. Mm -hmm. That's the first uh, virtual uh, event of the year, and we're also featuring uh, startup founders, AI startup founders, you know, Great. in these events. Uh, so if anyone wants to attend or even present if, if you're a startup founder happy to um connect for that's an open call exactly perfect <laughs> great um and oh um, i actually might have a previous speaker that needs to hear this and she's in new york and she's greek so i'm gonna let her know oh my god <laughs> bringing people together great yeah. so uh, hatch labs info day january 23rd Mm -hmm, exactly and i'll send the link as well uh to Perfect. you uh, to the audience uh and also we're planning some further events with vcs um in new york this most likely will be in person um but uh we intend to as we grow to have at least one monthly event one info day uh and uh an in-person event as well with a vc or um partnership with VCs in the future so yeah great that's great uh and um I understand that except for the partnerships with the VCs uh as you're currently bootstrapping you're also going to uh plan to raise some funds I understand it's not your main priority right now but it's uh it's going to be a future need right Exactly. So um, in the future, uh, as uh, we um, have more, um, as we have the need for developing this as a product, uh, mm -hmm. and we will need to hire and have a whole product team, then definitely that will be the time to raise funding um, and go out for uh around at that point yeah yeah you're giving me a great uh uh question uh, actually a great answer so that i can move on to the next question which is i know that you're currently doing this uh, let's say on your own i'm sure you have um people that you're consulting uh <laughs> for sure uh from your industry and uh, the whole academic experience um but uh i believe that you're going to need a team and i would love to know more and this is also an open call for anyone out there listening to us if you have what it takes to um get in touch with eva uh and uh probably have a discussion with her please feel free to contact either me or her straight on linkedin by linkedin or any other so social platform that makes sense for you mm -hmm. guys okay perfect thank you yes uh, because we're planning to hire a co-founder and cto uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the future um uh, the earlier we find the right fit the better uh but someone that if someone has the, the skills that are needed in terms of generative ai software experience research experience um Please do not hesitate to contact um, me or directly you, Federer. Uh, and um, I would be glad to to connect because that's a role that uh, we want to to have, especially since we plan to to have a product as the Hatch Labs uh, team grows. Great, that's great. So we're currently looking for two people uh, with the uh, characteristics that Eva just shared. And also, I would like to uh, tell everyone that they are we are open to listening 
uh, from anyone that is in the industry or has industry-related experience that has to share something or wants to get in touch. Uh, both Eva and I are open to uh, bringing people together and growing the network because uh, the most uh, people in this network, the better. And please feel free to comment or uh, whatever makes sense for you. And we're going to get in touch. So is there anything that you would like to share with me um, before we wrap it up? That makes sense for you. If not, I would, uh, I would <laughs> gladly, yeah, I would gladly give you my my blessings and uh, my <laughs> my good vibes, good Greek vibes. <laughs> um, thank you. I think my last uh, comment would be um, for everyone in in the industry that is planning or thinking about um, launching an AI product in 2024 or even later. Uh, to think, uh, to probably like take a step back and think more strategically in terms of what need uh, AI really solves for them. Like mm. it's summer for every uh, <laughs> uh, for every hole <laughs> that exists, uh, and we really need to um, be uh, mindful and strategic uh, and understanding what what's the problem that AI solves and what's what's the right approach that really serves the customers and brings a, an outstanding uh, customer experience. Uh, so with that, uh, I would like to, <laughs> to 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 give it as a final thought um, and advice for everyone. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this, and uh, I totally agree with you. Um, it's very important to read the the trends and the graphs and understand what is happening and what is coming within the next years. Mm -hmm. As a strategy has uh, indeed saved many uh, new businesses from failure. Yes. Or, yeah. Uh, and uh, I believe that, especially with these new technologies, we need to uh, think twice um, mm -hmm. before we make before we make steps and before we we just create. Uh, let's call it traditional business uh, plan. Because it's 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 not traditional anymore. It's um, it's something new. So, um, <laughs> Eva, Mo, I'm I'm so glad to have had this talk with you, and uh, mm -hmm. I cannot wait to have this interview hopefully again <laughs> within the next months. Uh, and see where you are at that point. Uh, with Hatch Labs, uh, again, we're gonna share under the YouTube video a couple of links that are interesting and is gonna mm -hmm. give you. Uh, our audience more information about Hatch Labs and we are waiting for anyone uh, interested in discussing to just give it a shot and uh, text us or email us. So lots of love from Grace. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Uh, it was a pleasure. My pleasure too and thank you uh, Fedra and thank you for Startups Greece as well for this opportunity. Mm -hmm.